morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning Five here on Wednesday, August 26th, 2020. I am Dave Biddle. I am joined by the People's Champ, Matt Baxendell. Bax, good morning. How are you doing? You hanging in there? Um, I'm still trying to get over the fact that the only silver bullets I'm going to have this fall are Coors Light instead of our beloved Buckeyes. And I like Coors Light. I really like Coors Light even. But, man, I'd rather have a Coors Light while watching the Buckeyes play football 12 games this fall or 10 games this fall like the other conferences seem to be doing. So uh, there's there's definitely some bitterness here uh, that the Buckeyes are in the spot they're in. Um, I, I, this is one of those things where, like, I don't know if we're ever going to really be okay with it. You know what I mean? It, it, it seems like the conference bigwigs are more concerned about calling the police on the Big Ten parents to come talk to Kevin Warren than they are about actually changing their mind on this decision. So we may be stuck with a fall without the Buckeyes for the first time since the late 1800s. And I don't know if there's anything we can do about it at this point. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hanging in there. I'm not pleased about it, though. When they made this decision over two weeks ago, really Kevin Warren made the decision with the Big Ten presidents. We'll get into all that. When they made this decision, I think they were thinking in the next week after that, maybe two weeks, other leagues would start dropping out. And that's not happening. It's going the other way. It really looks like if it didn't look this way two weeks ago, it certainly looks like to me now that the SEC, ACC, Big 12 are going to be able to play. You have high schools. They're going to play. They kick off this Friday in Ohio. They had scrimmages last Friday in Ohio. Indiana began last Friday with regular season games. Uh, I know the Middletown School District here in Ohio initially was not going to have fall sports. They reversed course. They said there's new information coming in. So people have asked me, I'm sure they've asked you, is there any chance the Big Ten is going to reverse course and have football this fall? What do you think, Bex? I don't see it happening, though. I thought it was interesting. There was something that came out yesterday from Sports Illustrated uh, that through their Michigan stuff said that uh, if there's a vote today in the Big Ten, they wouldn't have canceled football. So it tells you how the public reaction has changed the way the power brokers see this. Uh, the reality is they know it was a dumb decision, but their ego and pride are going to prevent them from going back on it. Uh, there was a kid who played football at Vanderbilt, and he opted out a week or so ago about concerns over COVID-19. Well, yesterday he opted back in because guess what? New information comes out. And this goes back to the original idiocy that was Kevin Warren trying to rush this decision to cancel the season because he thought it was the most important thing to – I don't even understand him at this point. But this is – you're 100% right. This is a Kevin Warren push decision. Kevin Warren didn't want the season. He's the one who pushed the, the presidents to not have the season. He didn't even consult his athletic directors. He didn't even talk to his players. You know, this is supposed to be the Kevin Warren listening tour and learning how to be a commissioner. He flat out failed it. So uh, the reality is, is they're not going to go back on their uh, decision out of sheer ego and arrogance. They're not going to go back on the decision, even though a lot of the indicators that they were trying to utilize, such as the myocarditis concern, seems to be pretty seriously faulty information. Uh, Kevin Warren's letter he released was an utter farce. That was a joke if we've ever seen one. That letter said things along the lines of they're spiking cases. There's not. If you look at the Midwest, their caseload's actually dropping. That's not true. You can't say that we're in the deep south where there was a big spike in cases, and even there they're going down. So, uh, you know, he talked about how it's an unknown. Okay, if it's fear of the unknown that's preventing us from playing football, then let the kids who are playing and their families make the choice. And we're still at the spot where – you know, they're not going to let them do it. And the reality here, Dave, is the SEC kicks off on, what, uh, October 5th or something like that, September 26th. That's six weeks from now, October 5th is. That's plenty of time if you let these kids get back into camp in a week to play a season this fall. This is a decision that can be changed. And right now, Ohio State, by the way, we didn't even get to the best part. Ohio State is going to lose $130 million by not playing football this fall. Right. And now some of that's revenue from tickets and that's going to be irretrievable no matter what. But the other side of this is, is that all these big time television contracts where they get 50 something million dollars a year, those are gone too. And you could recoup that money if your players are essentially in a safer bubble environment, like they've been from the start for Ohio state. I hope they're still fighting like hell behind the scenes, but the, and I, the issue is, is, 
Kevin Warren's the one who's on top of this right now. For him to go back on it pretty much emasculates him as, as any commissioner with any sort of power. And, you know, I think that their, their grand scheme was that they were going to be the Big Ten. They were going to throw their weight around. The Pac-12 was going to do whatever they said, which would cause the ACC and the Big 12 and all those other guys to not do it. And the SEC would say, all right, well, there's no point in us playing if no one else is. That hasn't happened. We're going to get football down south. Plain and simple, we are going to get football down south. And the black eye for the Big Ten, by the fact that there's football playing, is Im- immeasurable because the schools were ready to play. Their testing that they keep doing remains to be very low. And it's a disaster. There's no way to describe it. It's a disaster. Like, we're recording this at 8 in the morning here today, and I'm already ready to go drink more of my Coors. It's just – it's it's awful. It's <laughs> so bad. Coors light the silver bullet, and we're not going to have our silver bullets on the field this fall. Most likely, unless they're reverse course, but I agree with you. I don't think – there's any chance they are just because their egos will get in the way, even though um, evidence now points to uh, you guys probably would be able to have a season and finish and crown a champion. And the Buckeyes would have had a tremendous theme this year. It's just so depressing. So let's get into the blame game. I want to clear this up. I've heard a lot, had a lot of people say, well, come on. Yeah. Kevin Warren hasn't handled this well, but you guys are giving him too much blame. You're not blaming the people who really are to blame here, and that is the university presidents. If they wanted football, the presidents, we would have football. That's, that's been posed to me. And I agree with that. If the university presidents were adamant that there should be football, there would be football. If there was a clear majority of presidents that wanted football and they came to Kevin Warren and said, this is what we want, you know, that's it, period. Yeah, there'd be football. But here's what really happened. You had about, according to Jeff Snook, who I trust profusely, you had about four or five presidents that wanted to play. Four or five that did not, including, we know, for sure, you know, Rutgers and Maryland. I don't know why they even have a vote at the table, to be honest. <laughs> Their votes should not count at least as much as the rest of the conference that's actually you know, contributed to the, the success of this conference. And then you had the rest of, you know, whatever it would be, like two, three, four. What the, the rest of the Big Ten presidents were kind of in the middle. They weren't sure what to do. Kevin Warren was able to get those that were kind of on the fence on his side. So... Yes, if the Big Ten presidents all wanted football, we'd have football. But if Kevin Warren wanted football, even just with the way it was, with it kind of being half and half, we would have football. So both things can be true. Bucknutters, both things are true. We would have football if the Big Ten presidents wanted football. We would have football if Kevin Warren wanted football. I still give Kevin Warren the most blame, though, because when they went into that meeting, when it was split, he was the one that was kind of the – they didn't take a vote, but kind of if you want to say – you know, it was – he was the deciding vote, so to speak. He was. So, I give them both blame. They both deserve blame. But Kevin Warren, to me, deserves the most blame backs. What do you think? If Kevin Warren had just been neutral on this, saying, oh, look, I work for you, presidents. How, how comfortable are you with this? We'd have had football. They'd have delayed the start from September 3rd to October 5th or something. But we would have had football. This is on Kevin Warren, Right. And you know, there, the, the reality is these presidents I, and Kevin Warren, I think, also massively misjudged the way that the Big Ten sees football as part of our culture, right? These are academics who, you know, they, they see the point of the university is to do research and to get you a degree and all this other crap, right? And they look at the SEC and they're like, oh, they're all about football, Right. They're, they're, in, it, it, the ridiculous part about this is, is that a lot, I think a lot of the, the presidents and Kevin Warren probably scorned the whole SEC's it means more thing, right? Well, they underestimated how much people care in the Midwest about this. They under, I mean, Nebraska, what do we say about them? Nebraska nice is literally the phrase. Nebraska was livid. Nebraska was the teenager throwing up middle fingers as soon as this thing came out, Right. They underestimated how much football means to the Big Ten, right? And maybe to a lot of people, it isn't just all the, oh, the Big Ten Committee for Cooperation on Research. Well, guess what? Now you have a major issue. And all these, you know, ivory tower academics are thinking, oh, my gosh, what do we do? Because their donations are now at risk. Because most of the big money donors are pissed. And, yeah, it's the university president's fault as much as it is Kevin Warren. But Kevin Warren was the one who pushed for this decision. Make no bones about it. Kevin Warren actively did not want football. 
And were this Jim Delaney, and let me ask you this, Dave, but were this Jim Delaney, you think we'd be playing in October? Because I know what I think. Yes, for sure. Yes, exactly. There's zero doubt. Jim Delaney, the second COVID-19 came down, would have said, okay, we're going to have an active committee with a couple sitting presidents and a couple athletic directors and me on it to discuss safety protocols as soon as we're allowed to get kids back on campus. So when June rolled by and the Big Ten kids were getting back to their universities to be able to start working out, they'd have had protocols league-wide in place, league-wide. And Jim Delaney would have had some sort of hammer behind him saying, it's okay if your kids are busy partying and get too much COVID and, and, and aren't able to play, you get one bye week. Second bye week, you forfeit, and the win goes to whoever. So don't blow it, right? Jim Delaney had what was called a spine. And Jim Delaney would not have let the league that he worked for three decades fall behind the SEC in any way, shape, or form. That's where the Big Ten is going right now because of feckless leadership by Kevin Warren. And by the way, if there ever came the point where Delaney felt like they needed to cancel it, he'd have gotten every single one of those presidents on record, and we would have had a vote. If it was eight to six and Rutgers and Maryland were the deciding choices, they'd have been on, the, on blast for it, right? We would have known exactly what it was, plain and simple. And that's what we're still waiting on. There is no medical data any different than the stuff the SEC Big 12 and ACC people are looking at. It's just the willingness to have football. Uh, th there, there, if there wasn't a vote, shame on them. Because if there's a decision like this, you need to have a very strong, clear reason if you're one of the schools that wanted football for something this momentous to happen. I mean, if I, and it's not just because it's football and it matters to us. If you're a university person who's in charge of major events at your school and you're looking at a $130 million loss incurring because of a decision you made, not because of a natural disaster, not because of something outside your control, but because you actively were part of a choice to do something. Wouldn't you want a darn good explanation for it? And even more importantly, if you're Christina Johnson or you're any of these presidents, wouldn't you want that vote on record saying, no, I don't agree with costing my university $130 million. So to me, this is, this is one of the greatest F ups in history when it comes to anything related to big decision-making. It is a masterclass that will be taught in graduate school on leadership failures. And the reality is, is that, in life, if you make a bad decision, you should have never have the ego so big that you can't swallow your pride and go back on it when you know you're wrong. And the reality here is, is that this isn't just, you know, leadership waving in the wind of public opinion. The reality is, is that all, everything that they calculated is happening, like everybody else quitting on football within a week. That ain't happening, bub. So now they really need to make a hard look at things. And I tell you what, there's a lot of political pressure, too, on these schools to do things. Uh, it's, it's no more than 5%. I don't think they go back on it. But I think there's a very angry group of people that aren't going to not be angry. And I think Ryan Day's plan of early January, if it's remotely feasible, is going to happen because Ohio State's sitting here pissed off having lost out on a national championship season because the commissioner of their own damn league could make his mind up to be an actual leader. Yeah, and in regard to Delaney Bax, I guarantee you he would have listened to what the parents wanted, what the players wanted. Kevin Warren's ignored all of that. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kevin Warren's son, as we, we've kind of beaten this to death, but I just it's the height of hypocrisy that Powers Warren, the son of Kevin Warren, is going to be playing football in the SEC this year for Mississippi State. Uh, he's a third-year sophomore tight end. And people have said, oh, get off Kevin, Kevin Warren's back. Powers Warren is an adult. We have the term college kids for a reason. Like, you still are kind of listening to your parents when you're in college. You know, they, they can do certain things like not give you money. I mean, tr to act like the parents have absolutely no sway over what their kids are doing when they're in college. Again, we call them college kids. And when you call them, like, college men, it almost sounds like, you know, you're being disingenuous. It's like they're college kids. So that just adds to the hypocrisy, to the lunacy of all of this that – the man who's responsible for canceling Big Ten football, his son is going to be playing in the SEC this fall. 
And to me, the, the most hypocrisy of this is that his defense is he's a grown adult and he can make his own choices. Well, there's 1,200 grown adult football players in the Big Ten. How about they get to make their own choices? Good point. I mean. Right. That's, that's the, you don't need to get any more in depth than that. Like, the, the bottom line here, Kevin Warren is hiding. And you know what his strategy with this is? He is going to hide his butt in wherever he was in Minnesota and not go to the Big Ten offices until the latest possible moment. He's going to hope that this COVID thing lasts as long as possible. And then when everybody comes at, with fury at him at the next press conference he has, he's going to go, look, that's an old decision. We don't need to revisit it. We're, we're talking about the future. That's his strategy is to try to make this ignore as much as possible and hope people aren't as hot next time he has to see the press. But here's Kevin Warren's future if he doesn't change this decision. The net, let's say life gets back to normal and Kevin Warren is at the Big Ten basketball tournament in March. That's just an example. That's a best case scenario. He's the Big Ten basketball tournament in March and Ohio State beats Nebraska for the Big Ten championship in basketball and Kevin Warren comes out to award the Big Ten championship trophy. They're going to have to have like a police escort to get him out of there. Like every crowd that ever sees Kevin Warren going forward is going to greet him with a chorus of thunderous boos, right? You know, it's going to be uh, – you remember that, that, uh, that movie, The Dictator, where he came to America and was wondering why people in New York were booing him and throwing things at him? Yes. Or in his future <laughs> with Big Ten fans. Like, they, they do not like this guy. He is irredeemable in the eyes of the common man. And I put this in the bucket of bullets a week ago. Kevin Warren's on thin ice with the people who decide his job. Because we already know at least half of the Big Ten or almost half of the Big Ten disagreed with this choice in the first place. And the messaging, the public outcry, the failed strategy of trying to force the other leagues to follow our lead outside of the Pac-12, which was going to do this no matter what because they haven't even let their kids back on campus yet. Uh, th the reality is I think a lot of these presidents that were on the fence have jumped off the fence and are sitting here like, yep, kill Kevin Warren for it. If there wasn't an official vote, they're going to claim they were in favor of it. You're, this is going to be like one of those things where somebody throws a no hitter and there's 5,000 people in attendance and 20 years later, half the city says they were there. All these big 10 presidents are going to say, no, I was in favor of it. Uh, you know, uh, but in this, since there's not an official vote, you know, everybody kind of went along with Kevin Warren. You're going to have 14 presidents that, that, that all look back and claim that they were in favor of it when this is all said and done. And that's the reality is that Kevin Warren's going to end up, I don't think as a big 10 commissioner for very long because of how badly he's blown this. Oh, no question about it. I'm going to do a you know, little programming note here, Bucknutters. I'm going to do a column in the near future. If, uh, you know, if, and I don't think this is hyperbole at all. This will go down as the biggest blunder in sports history. If the SEC, Big 12, ACC are able to play, finish their season, crown a champion, and Ohio State is sitting at home just watching Clemson play and watching Alabama play when they could have played, it'll go down as, in my opinion, the biggest blunder in sports history. And I'm trying to even think of a close second. It's going to be amazing. So I'm going to do a piece on that for the site later this week. Before we get out of here, Bax, by the way, if you really want to read a column, Bax's column every Sunday, the bucket is the one you really want to read. He comes strong every Sunday with the bucket. So that is must read material. But before we get you out of here, Bax, I want to ask you one more question. Are you concerned about recruiting from Ohio State standpoint? Do you think this will be if they don't play this fall and they don't play again until next fall? Do you think this will be a blip on the radar? Do you think this – because I guess, you know, as Bill Kerlick has said, the one silver lining is, if you want to look at any possible silver lining, is now the staff has a lot more time to work on recruiting, but you have the SEC and all those other conferences saying, look, look what Ohio State's doing in this Big Ten. Uh, they're doing a thing called not playing football while we are playing football, but they're recruiting kids that – that really has – this has no impact on them as far as college football so are you worried about recruiting or no for Ohio State um from Ohio State's perspective there's going to be some kids who are not going to consider the Big Ten that would have in the past that's just a, a reality if you're a kid playing high school football in Texas right now you're you're going to have the memory of the Big Ten not playing while the Big 12 is or the SEC is right that's just the fact it's going to hurt Ohio State less than most because kids look at colleges and they want to go play in the NFL and Ohio State's a factory, right? Uh, and they're going to remember Ohio State, Nebraska in particular, being just pissed off by this and knowing that we don't agree with it. But the reality is the Big Ten has handed the SEC a big propaganda win on that front because it clearly does matter more. Their presidents weren't bending over backwards to cancel football. The successor to their longtime commissioner 
the newer guy and Greg saying he wasn't sitting here bending over backwards trying to cancel football. Um, the reality is uh, the Big Ten is losing face badly. And for schools like like Northwestern or Illinois or, you know, those lower tier schools that aren't the biggest powerhouses at football, when they go down south to recruit kids, they're at a disadvantage even more than they already are. And, you know, you can sell academics only so much, right? But kids want to go to a school where they know that fo- football matters, right? And if it's clear that football matters and it's a second-tier school, why would they go to the SEC – or why would they leave SEC country? Why wouldn't they go to an AAC school who might still be playing? You know what I mean? I mean, then th- that's the reality here. If I'm Luke Fickle and I'm recruiting in Ohio, I'm saying, hey, we played. There's not the difference between Cincinnati and, and Columbus, but Ohio State can't play football, you know? And the reality is, is these Big Ten presidents and Kevin Warren, it's like, it's like they, they wanted a pat on the back from, the, from the, 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 the school types, right? They want to be on the right side of history and be the first ones to do it. And they were so eager to do it that they never stopped and paused and thought whether they should do it. And for Ohio State, the implications of it being long term, it's going to cut a little bit of the pool down that they're going to be able to recruit from but it's going to hurt the rest of the big 10 way more. This sets the rest of the big 10 back years. If there's football down South and there's not football up here, plain and simple. Great stuff. As always from Matt Baxendale, really appreciate it Bax. And thank you to all the listeners out there for tuning into the show. Have a great day, Bucknutters. Nutters.